Today I've got 10 amazing tips for you to use your sewing machine to its best advantage. So if you are just starting out in sewing, this video is the video for you. And if you're not, it might serve as a reminder. So let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel. My name's Kurt. On this channel, I talk about plus size and beginner sewing. So today is more of a beginner video. Although if you're not a complete beginner, it might act as a refresher for you. So do stay tuned and watch to the end. Basically, I wish these tips were available to me when I first started sewing. Alas, they were not, but they are now and it's gonna make your life a lot lot easier so let's get straight into them shall we so the first tip i have for you is to use the correct needle so you can see i've got a selection of needles here so i use a different needle depending on the task and the type of fabric that i'm using so you can see my collection here I've got some Microtex needles. So Microtex you would use if you've got a very fine fabric. So I've got some Universal and what you might notice is I'm using Smiths in all of my, pretty much all of my needles now. But now I've been sewing for quite a few years, I have upgraded to Smiths. On there, there's a little, little colour there and that just tells you which needle you've got in your machine and that's so helpful i've got a top stitch needle that came with my janome i've got some jersey needles you would use jersey needles for knits basically so here's my little pot where i keep them all a few little stickers here just washi tape so i've got 70 and 90 and stretch if i use a needle just for a short project and it's not completely worn out i will just pull it behind these stickers so i can use it again and those stickers which i did when i was using the cheap needle so i didn't have the color code in they would tell me what type of needle it was and that was really helpful and then when i've just used my needles up i've got lots of um used needles in there and i just keep them there for safekeeping So for the next point, you want to make sure that your tension is correct. Your machine will vary where your tension is. This is my backup machine. Um, and I've got this one out just because my one that I use all the time is an automatic one. So it works a little bit different. So just here, you'll see a dial. I've actually got it on eight or nine at the moment. So I was playing around with the tension. You usually want it about four. So on mine, it's got a little square around the number to dictate whereabouts you want it. Generally want to keep it on number four or about halfway between the top and the bottom. But you really do need to test it out. So I've got some denim here and I've got, and I've got some pink thread. So we can see it nice and clearly. is my stitching so I've got a different color bobbin to my top thread if your tension is unbalanced so it's either too loose which would be like if it was seven or eight or if it's too tight which is one or two I hope I've got those around the wrong way so if it's too loose you will see your bobbin thread coming up between your top thread stitches and vice versa so if it was too tight you would see it underneath let's have a go uh it's on number one actually let's put it on zero so it's on zero and we're gonna just look at that back stitching barely even taken at all so that would be too loose if we put it up to the maximum and we stitch see what happens so when you've got it at the maximum the back looks good but the front doesn't you have that opposite problem 
So let's pull it back down to four, which is what we want it to be. There we can see perfect stitching on both sides. You'll sometimes get the lower stitches coming through on either side if it's not right, but often it is just that the actual stitching looks too loose. Both look great. When we turn them over, one looks good and one doesn't. So that's the normal one and that is the one that is too loose. First things first, when you're about to sew, you want to grab a scrap bit of fabric, chop a little bit off, you're just going to want to fold it in half, put it under the sewing machine and give it a sew. This will help us determine if we have got the right, if we've got the right needle, we've got the right tension and it's going to sew lovely. You can then tell yourself whether that is the right tension. No, I don't think that is the right tension. So I would be playing around with my tension over here until I got it right and not making that mistake on the actual garment that I'm sewing. So here you can see I've got lots of bobbins and most of them are filled up. Orange, navy, pink. Whatever colour you can think of, I've got it here. So, apart from black. So what we're going to do now is we're going to fill a bobbin. You always want one or two bobbins in the same colour that you're working with. And you want to preload them before you're doing a project. There's nothing worse than running out of your bobbin halfway through your project. So, now this isn't a how to wind a bobbin. This is just a wind a bobbin. So we've got a spare bobbin, put it on there, like that, wind that around. Some people poke it through the hole, I never do. I say this isn't how to wind a bobbin and then I'll show you how to wind a bobbin. I want to make sure your speed control is on the biggest one. I just cut it off. So now we have a bobbin. So the next thing you want to do is take your threads and get a nice a long a piece of thread here. Put your fabric under the sewing machine. You want to hold your threads and then start sewing. And that just means you won't get any bunching underneath. If you look at the plate, you can see lots of markings. You can see lots of markings here. And that can be really helpful, but sometimes it's really difficult to see. So that's where this comes in handy. This is just some washi tape, Christmas washi tape at that. So what we're going to do is we'll take a strip and we'll tear some off. Or bite it off. So then we find the marking that we want. So in this case two, uh, we can sew up against that line. We put our fabric under the presser foot and line it up with this red line. And then we have a nice even line at the distance that we want it. You can also use an elastic band. I haven't got one big enough here or you can buy magnetic clips that you put there. I've got a big post-it notepad here. If you only have a small post-it notepad, you could use that instead. If you don't have a washi tape to hand or anything else, just put the sticky side, which is that side, just put the sticky side down where you want it. And then you could just sew alongside that and it won't, it sh well, it will move, but it, it shouldn't do while you're sewing. And that will help you to keep a straight line. So we're going to sew a corner here but we're not going to pivot. That is one technique but I think if we go off the edge we're going to be more successful. So we're going to sew on this line here. So I've come up to the point where we would normally pivot so we'd raise the presser foot 
turn it, go down and carry on sewing. But we're not going to do that. So we've sewn up to this point and we're just going to sew off the fabric like that. And then we're going to go start again. As you cross over the other stitching that you did in the other way, you'll want to back stitch then and then carry on sewing. And don't go over your pins like I just did. So now that area is stronger and especially if you're going to cut in to that corner, they're still going to be secure because we back stitched. It's got two stitches going over each other rather than one stitch going around the corner. The next thing you want to do when you're sewing is to go super slow. So you can see here, I've got a speed control. Not all machines have this. The lower end machines won't have this. But if you put it on one triangle, that's gonna go super slow. Uh, two triangles, medium and three full power. Now, I tend to work with full power. If you're less experienced, then you'll probably want to go medium. Or sometimes if you're doing a really difficult part, you'll want to go totally slow. So we're gonna keep it on number one. Look how slow that is going. And it might be frustrating to go slow, but you're gonna have less mistakes if you do. So we're gonna speed it up to number two now. You see it's going a little bit faster. And number three, super fast. So that just means the slower you go, the less mistakes that you are going to make. It'll take longer, but believe me, that's not a bad thing. So now it's time to clean our machine out. And that is the next really, really important um, tip really. Make sure you regularly clean your machine out like once a month, ma minimum, not maximum, minimum. To do that, you're gonna want a few things. I've got a microfiber cloth here, but I don't know how much use that's gonna be. I've got this, which is from a photography kit. So that's gonna be good for dislodging dirt. We've got some bits and bits. I've got a smaller version there, which will be easier for getting in the nooks and crannies. My machine supplied this, so you should have something similar in your stuff. And that should be enough. So we're gonna clean the top, because where I leave this lid open quite a lot, it gets so dusty in there. I really wanna try it and make sure I shut the lid more often. The most important thing is we're gonna clean inside of it. I've also got some non-toxic clean. Oh, so my machine's working on its own now. Um, I've got some non-toxic stuff here and we're not, you absolutely do not want to use it in the bottom of your machine, but it's helpful to give it a clean on the outside, which we'll do at the end. Turn your machine off. So now we want to take the free arm off. So I just want to give a dust under there. Inside this machine bit that you do not want to use any cleaner on you don't need to anyway put two screws on this side one screw on this side there we are first things first i'm taking the bobbin out and then i am taking the bobbin holder out now we can clean just inside where the bobbin sits. So in all the nooks and crannies, I don't see any real like rhyme or reason for doing it in a certain way. Some people might unscrew this end, but I don't do that. See, this isn't too bad because I have cleaned it a little while ago because my machine told me I had to. It isn't actually too bad at the moment. You probably haven't got one of these, so don't worry too much about it. I'm just being a bit overzealous. That's the dust that came out of it. So not too bad. But cleaning a machine isn't just cleaning this part, it's also cleaning the whole thing. 
So let's put our thing back together. On here, you've got a little white dot and you've got a little white dot on here. That's in nicely. machine a bit of an overall clean now this is something i never ever do but you know i'm with you guys now so we will a bit better i'm never ever gonna spray directly on the machine so we've done the bottom part We've cleaned here, we've got to do the top part. We'll so take our thread out. You're not gonna get it absolutely pristine like in the shop, I wish, but just do your best really. done we've got a nice clean sewing machine so you've got a sneak peek of my v neck that went wrong my next one um but i'm working this is a 12 i'm working on it um the next tip is your foot so when you're not using your foot it can be tempting to wrap it up like this but you do not want to do that this will ruin your foot really, really quickly. So when I wrap my foot up, I never ever wrap the wire around it. So I will just collect it loosely and then put it away wherever I'm going to put it. And this will really extend the life of your foot because it will reduce the likelihood of these wires getting stressed and breaking inside the casing. So I hope you found those tips useful. If you did, leave me a comment down below. Subscribe, do all the things, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye for now.